Hi, I'm Princess Gaia. Hi, I'm Dr. D. And today we're going to deepen our discussion of intrinsic versus extrinsic value. Princess Guy, can you remind our audience what you meant by intrinsic value? Yes, I can start talking about intrinsic values. So if we are intrinsically motivated, if we act intrinsically, we act from within ourselves um, and we follow a deeper purpose. We, have, um, we are inspired, we are visionary, and in being visionary, we are deeply trusted in trust, we are in resonance with ourselves, we are connected, we are conciliated with ourselves, with the actions we take and with the world around us. And what we do, we do not only with love, rather are we loving the whole process of just being or of doing. Intrinsic means that we observe and perceive without judging. Intrinsic means that we live a joyful life without having our desires met only by having our basic needs met. Intrinsic means listening, looking, and sensing in between the obvious. Um, intrinsic also means to being happy by just being, not assuming that we need to be somebody else. And so in these means, we align our behavior with our values, and um, this makes us free. So besides this inner calmness, besides this deep resonance, this trust and this love, freedom of mind is for me the biggest treasure of living an intrinsic motivated life. Gosh, if I were to compare that, I'll talk about the easy one. That's <laughs> extrinsic value. And simply stated, extrinsic, when we think about extrinsic value is normally something that can be measured in economic or transactional terms, right? So for example, if I were to pick up a pen, right, it has an extrinsic value of a dollar. That has a certain exchange value, right? But it can also exercise a transactional value. In other words, it helps me do something kind of instantly for some sort of an instant gratification. It helps you write something, just some sort of a, a quick fix, a quick round of pleasure, I guess you could say. And this is what I usually think of when I think of extrinsic value. Okay, so can I ask you a question? So, in your opinion, who do you think is the most extrinsic person who ever lived? You know what, that's going to have to be the Marquis de Sade. I can think of nobody that is more extrinsic than the Marquis. So, can you explain me and the audience who Marquis de Sade was? So, his full name was Donatien Alphonse Francois de Sade. He was a member of the lower French aristocracy. We think he was born around 1740 and he died around 18, uh, 1814. He spent many of his early days um, basically carousing in bordellos and with prostitutes. Um, and because of his sexual crimes, he's a man who spent actually a little bit more than half of his life in prison. But when he was in prison, he wrote many of his novels, the most famous of which is 120 Days of Song. Okay, and um, thank you. So what, what, is, what was really extrinsic about him? You know, Dasan lived exclusively for short-term pleasure. He always took advantage of other people and he always hurt them. You know, his escapades with prostitutes usually involved abuse, sometimes even murder possibly, and his actions wound up hurting not only his family and the women that he victimized, but it also hurt himself. But he did everything just to get that short-term quick fix. And we normally think of Desaad as a man who sought like a quick, easy orgasm when he was younger, so that's very extrinsic. But as he got older, he became impotent, and he engaged in binge eating. And the story was that he became so fat from binge eating as he got older that there was not a tailor in the entire city of Paris who could make pants big enough to fit his fat legs. Wow, wow. So is he actually the founder of sadomasochism? You know, people get confused with this a lot. Um, sadomasochism as a kind of sexual philosophy still thrives on mutual consent of both parties. And that's the real difference between sadomasochism and the traditional sadism as advocated by 
Marquis de Sade. Marquis de Sade composed a coherent ethic based upon the principle of non-reciprocity. It is a doctrine that is anti-humanist, anti-liberal, anti-democratic, anti-women, and it has a contempt for human dignity. And it prioritizes short-term satiation and pleasure above all else. It has even been described by some as being a system of ethics without any redeeming social value whatsoever. So in our next video, Princess Gaia is gonna give us some insights on how she would react to the doctrines and the ideas of Marquis de Sade. And as always, if you like these videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up, that's a like. Subscribe to the Princess Gaia YouTube channel or the Dr. D University channel, and make sure you comment below if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.